Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva. You know, it feels good to be a winner. It feels extremely good to win. This is what it feels like to be on top of the world. A world champion. If you don't know, if you can't catch what I'm talking about, I um the Super Bowl happened this past weekend. And I think I told you that I might bet my friend, my good pal, some money on the Chiefs. I I decided to bet him 20 bucks that I think that the Chiefs were going to win. He bet the Eagles were going to win. And I was ready to bet 20 bucks. And he decides, you know what? Why don't we do 40? Let's bet $40. I said, okay, I'll bet you 40. I was that confident. And the Chiefs ended up winning that game. So I am richer than I was before because of my my pick to win the game, to win the Super Bowl. So I'm in a good mood. I've been in a pretty good mood for the past couple days now. I mean, if you were $40 richer... I think you would be too. Now, of course, let's talk about the game. Was it a good game? I think that it was one of the best games that we've seen in a while, actually. Now, being a Rams fan, last last year's Super Bowl was pretty incredible as well. But I have to admit, the way that this game um, began from the middle to the end... The scoring and the, the, the tide shifting from the Eagles were like pretty much in well command in the first half. And then the Chiefs were like, no way. Uh-uh. We're still the Chiefs. We're going to come back and kick your ass in the second half. I mean, that, that was a really, really good game, I have to admit. Back and forth, pretty tight, 37, 38, 35 Chiefs. At the end of the day, pretty well matched game, I would say. If you're talk, if you're considering the score, I mean, the Chiefs' offensive line. If we can talk about that really quickly, might have stolen the show. Really, might have stolen the show, because if you think about it, the Eagles' defense, they had, I believe, the number two defense in the entire NFL, behind the 49ers. I mean, they were scary. They they were known for sacking multiple quarterbacks many, many times, applying pressure, not being able to get away, not being able to get into a groove. And, you know, they had Patrick Mahomes a couple times, but really at the end of the day, they really had no answer to him at the end of the day as well. They just could not fathom. They could not get behind well enough to get him under pressure and it showed they were not able to get to him and that's kind of suspicious but also thank god right because i mean you have i guess like they like what they what i've said the second best defense in the league against the probably the best quarterback in the league actually you know after the super bowl win i guess you could pretty much cement him as the best quarterback in the league at this moment um, and I just feel like he was able to, you know, Patrick Mahomes was able to be calm, cool, collected in the pocket, pick apart that, that defense. And what I tell you, man, the key, I think also the key to their success was the, the Chiefs O-line giving him time and also Travis Kelsey and being able to control the midfield and just not being able to cover him, not being able to tackle him. Them getting a bunch of chunk yardage. And then also the running back, Isaiah Pacheco, just absolutely out, like like going above and beyond in that game and wrecking havoc and being like a security blanket for the Chiefs. Was totally unexpected for me. I did not expect Isaiah Pacheco to have the type of game that he did. 
and I thought that it was just really something to see because, you know, they have Travis Kelsey, Juju Smith-Schuster, um, and then Patrick Mahomes, but Isaiah Pacheco has kind of been flying under the radar for this past, you know, entire season. It ha- He hasn't really been like a like a focal point, I, I guess you could say, of that, that offensive, you know, firepower. But the Super Bowl man, he was like, I thought that he should have been you know, the MVP of that game because of how much he extended drives, how much he just kind of burst it open on the Eagles' defensive line. I thought he just played so well that he deserved the Super Bowl MVP. Now, of course, it went to Patrick Mahomes. You know, obviously, that that's just kind of been the trend of the NFL. You know, the person who, you know, it's always usually going to be a quarterback that wins the MVP and even in the you know in the super bowl the the whoever's qb wins a super bowl pretty much wins um the uh, uh super bowl mvp so that kind of went hand in hand in that one obviously you know he deserved it he's you know he played efficient i don't think he had any turnovers and um and when it comes down to it, what really killed the Eagles was that one turnover, with which was a, a fumble for six by Jalen Hurts. And besides that, Jalen Hurts played amazing. He really did. He played unbelievable in that game. Both quarterbacks played unbelievable in, in this Super Bowl. Um, the, the Just the deep bombs from Jalen Hurts to A.J. Brown and these deep catches were just like some of like the craziest throws that you ever would have seen. Like so many like oh moments like oh my god he caught it oh my god. I mean, talk about betting a game, man. Talk about the roller coaster ride of this game. You know, me and the Chiefs, we were we were neck and neck in the in the shit together, you know, hoping that we would come out a winner and we did at the end. But man, on the way, on that journey on the way there, the Eagles were not giving up. They were playing very well. They were making making plays. In that first half, it looked pretty rough. It looked very, very rough. And even the second half, when they didn't score as much points, they still made it very, very interesting and very uncomfortable for people like me who had money on the Chiefs. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because I walked away a winner, and the Chiefs walked away a winner. We walked together, me and the Chiefs, into the sunset as winners. And you know what? No one can take that away from us because people are going to get mad at the final holding call um, from James Bradbury on Juju Smith-Schuster. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it did look like he probably didn't do a whole lot to Juju Smith-Schuster. But also at the end of the game, James Bradbury even said that he did tug on his jersey and he thought that the refs were going to let it slide, they ended up not letting it slide and calling the penalty. And you know what, man? As much as we want to bitch and moan about uh, games being rigged, calls being not, you know, very fraudulent calls that are being um, called in the NFL, that seemed like the right call. I mean, that was... If you can kind of take Bradbury's words for it, which I believe him wholeheartedly. And I think if you look at the play, there is something there and he tried to get away with it. He definitely did. I mean, at least his reaction when the, when the flag was thrown and the, and the call was made that he definitely, you know, thought he could get away with something, but he ended up not being able to get away with it. And rules are rules. You know, you got to play by the rules. Um, just because you're in the Super Bowl doesn't mean that you can, um, break those rules and not be penalized by them. At the end of the day, I was a winner, so were the Chiefs, and justice prevailed. We got a fair shot. I think everybody, you know, including Chiefs fans and me and the Chiefs, we became winners that day. You know, winners are born with, you know, sometimes a play, a, a call is made, and luckily, The call was right, it was just, and the win was not a cheesy win. It was, in fact, a legitimate um, W. 
You know, a W was a W at the end of the day. It doesn't matter. You know, people can be sore losers out there. People will be sore losers out there that that their team that they picked didn't win. But at the end of the day, you look back at the tape. You look back at, you know, the opportunities. Oh, well, maybe, you know, Jalen Hurts shouldn't have fumbled the ball. Or maybe, you know, when uh, when uh, Jalen Hurts like, threw that lateral pass to, I believe it was A.J. Brown, and then there was a fumble, but it was like a it, it wasn't counted as a football play, and it was scooped up for six, but it was called back because the receiver couldn't make a football play and take two steps to to to, to complete the pass or whatever, and it was not technically a fumble, just a incomplete pass. I mean, listen, that rule, I understand that it is uh, that that you need to make a football move, but the guy had possession of the ball. I mean, come on. You freeze frame that. You make it in slow motion, and Jesus Christ, man, if that's how you're going to use to make a, make the call, you have to throw away those two-step, that's two-step rule because the guy clearly had possession of the ball. I think that rule needs to be um, abolished. I think it needs to be be just thrown in the trash because it doesn't make any sense, especially when you have replay and people watching like, oh no, he caught the ball, which he, you know, completely did catch the ball. Um, just because he didn't take the two steps, you know, to make a football move. I mean, that's just stupid. It's, it's loser talk. It's petty. And it doesn't seem like it's fair because I would have won, you know, the chiefs would have won that game probably a lot more, easily than how, how they ended up winning it but then again you know it, it causes more drama it definitely gets more people to tune in um opinions will be said and people will have you know you be able to talk about the, the 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 choices that were made by the referees and you know at the end of the day isn't it also pretty cool that the referee's decision kind of infuels or fuels conversation around the sporting event and around what happened in that game. Isn't it kind of cool? You know, if we had robots calling these games and these games were made called perfect, 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 they wouldn't have as much, I think, um, they wouldn't have as much, you know, I guess controversy, uh, conversation around them, it wouldn't be as fun to do it. And you know why? At the end of the day, I know people want the game to be called perfect. But you know what? The fact that we have human referees calling these games is adds the human effect to the sport that I think that it so desperately needs. Even though it could screw somebody over. Even though it could screw a team over. You know, someone who has money on somebody. It doesn't matter, right? Someone's legacy, someone's future is on the line. But the fact that there's a referee calling this game, it just adds another element of like controversy and like uh, fraudness and then a storyline. And it's just, it builds upon that storyline and upon that experience. And it just builds and builds and builds and makes it an even better thing than you probably thought that it would be if the referees were robots and AI and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, I guess at the end of the day, I appreciate the refs calling the game how they called it. I thought it was pretty fair, pretty fair. Even that call that that seemed controversial, Bradbury even said, yeah, I tugged on him, he got away. You know, he, I thought I could get away with one, he couldn't do it. It's there right there in the paper, folks. It's, it's there in writing. He said it. You shouldn't be so sorry about it. It was the right call. Maybe at the wrong time, I don't know. But in fact, why, why would you? Okay, if you're the Eagles, right in that situation, there's still kind of a lot of time left on the clock. Why? This is what I don't understand. Is some some teams, even in close situations, within the two minute uh, two minute uh, drill situation, they tend to score way too quickly. You know, if the if the Chiefs were going to score that quickly. And you still got over a minute left, and all you need to do is score a touchdown, and you win when you get the ball back. Why not just try to do that and really work it out that way? Why do you just let them score? That way you got time to get the ball back, and then whatever you have to do, 
you work with that time and you know at that point i mean you're still a really good team you're the that eagles team is still really good at that moment in that moment in that last minute and a half whatever it is they could probably score again and beat the chiefs is that on the coaching staff is that on you know, uh, just like, you know, adrenaline, like we just got to stop them or what's the point on that? I understand. I don't think that teams, when they when they see the clock and they see like a team like the Chiefs going down the field with like a little over a minute and a half left, they're like, stop them, stop them, stop them, you know, stop them immediately, you know, whatever they do. They don't really think about like surrendering and letting them score because, you know, you're never you're never guaranteed another another opportunity opportunity in this league, right? You should I I get the mentality of not letting them score. I understand that. And why would you like let them score when you don't know if you're gonna be able to score in the next possession, right? I understand that. But I guess it's just like my brain who has seen like so many teams get burned because they score too early and then the other team has the capability of scoring with even less time than the team before and and better clock management and be able to melt the clock better and just get enough just so they could barely win, you know? And the Eagles team, that Eagles team with Jalen Hurts was perfectly capable of doing that, being able to do exactly what I just said, more, probably more effectively than the Chiefs. I mean, you saw in that game how many times the Eagles did a QB sneak and it was flawless. It never failed. And with Jalen Hurts as your quarterback, who's so big and strong and just can get low, I mean, it's pretty much automatic. Now, I'm not saying that the plays were going to end on a QB sneak or it wouldn't have ended on a QB sneak. But you got that card in your back pocket if you need to, and that's pretty much an automatic play. Also, we have to talk about the two wide-open um, touchdowns by the Chiefs that were pretty much the same play, but flipped. I, how do you get burned twice on that same play? Just flipped. Like, I don't understand. Like, there was so many plays where that Eagles defense, and this is also going back to, hey, maybe the Eagles defense just really got outplayed. Maybe, maybe they were, you know, just too cocky about themselves or too high on themselves or whatever and they just were not prepared for Andy Reid I'm thinking that might have been it but how do you get blown on those two plays where just like receivers are just left wide open and just walking into the end zone like how does that happen in a Super Bowl twice it's quite the mystery it's quite something that you think you know great teams are great defenses are known for not being able to you know get fooled that many times I don't know I have no idea you know maybe maybe the defensive coordinator was thinking about his next job maybe he was thinking about something else who knows you know I always hated when coordinators would get jobs pretty much secured before the Super Bowl you know why because you know, I feel like their mind is not in the right place. I feel like their mind is just not right at that moment. And it's not because, you know, of, you know, they, they just can't be locked in or think they're thinking about their future head coaching job. But maybe sometimes it is. You know, when Kyle Shanahan blew the Super Bowl against the Patriots, I'm pretty damn sure that before that game, he was announced as the 49ers next head coach. Um maybe there was something to that maybe he was maybe he was thinking about the future and his next job and what he's going to do in San Francisco and blew that game maybe he did maybe he didn't i don't know but it just always seems that when coaches coordinators get the job you know before the super bowl it always kind of feel like they you know are a little uh, distracted and don't but but how could you be right like how could you be distracted you have the opportunity to win a Super Bowl, right? I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just reading a little, little too into it to, to really get like a, a solid, con- come to a solid conclusion of why that happens. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. But what else could it be, though? That was so weird. That defense was so rock steady, rock solid, you know, before the Super Bowl. And they, they those two plays, those two touchdowns, like I said, just ate them up. And also, they couldn't stop Pacheco. I mean, he just gashed through all that, that defensive line. And then Kelsey, you know, 
didn't have a whole ton of yards, but he had a touchdown, and he just kind of blew through that midfield of the football game. I couldn't believe it. It was quite something that you never thought you would see come from the Eagles' defense and that kind of a collapse, that, that kind of like a monumental collapse. You know, maybe if they played better, they would have won that game. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe the, the Kansas City was also probably felt disrespected that their O-line was, you know, they, they, they had a lot of questions on that offensive line. And maybe people were like, eh, they're not that good. It turns out they're actually pretty good. You know, pretty damn good. Now it looks pretty damn good, though. It looks really good. I have to admit it. I have to admit I just, I you know, I, I, I never thought I would be this excited to see this movie that's coming out. It was... First shown that the, the first little teaser was shown during the Super Bowl, and it was called what was it called? It was for the movie The Flash, starring Ezra Miller. You know what? I uh, it seems like this guy is getting a pass. You know, from with, with all the horrible shit that he's being accused of, and what he has been claims that has happened to him and that he has committed these these crimes that I believe I believe I'm not being 100% honest or 100% factual of why he is being so so hate such hated but I'm pretty sure it's like kidnapping a disturbing the peace uh uh you know just being a wacko I'm not sure exactly the crimes that he's being accused of but it seems like over the past like seven or eight months, he has not been. He's been pretty much a menace to people and society. He's on the run, I believe. I think he's still on the run. I'm not sure if he's found or not. But anyways, his movie's coming out this June, The Flash, um, which absolutely looks like the coolest DC movie that that's coming out. I'll be honest. Um, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out, but the trailer is pretty rad. I mean, it basically looks like Spider-Man No Way Home, but for DC. So, if what I can see in this movie, what I can tell is going to happen in this movie, at least from by the trailer, is that Barry Allen, the Flash, played by Ezra Miller, is going to, um, be going back in time or altering a time period, or, or splitting universes, or some shit, because, you know, we're getting Ben Affleck's Batman back, but we're also getting Michael Keaton's Batman as well, and I'll be honest, I like Michael Keaton as Batman, he's not particularly my Batman, my Batman is Christian Bale, that's the one I really grew up with, and that's the one that I was, like, very fond of watching, but to a lot of people out there, Michael Keaton is their Batman. You know, he there he's essentially, you know, their Tobey Maguire for, the, for their Spider-Man, essentially. And, you know, only seeing Batman, the first movie, the first Tim Batman film, uh, Tim, Tim Burton Batman film, um, it's very good. It's very cool. It's very, uh, it can, it's kind of gothic and, and dark. It's pretty cool. Michael Keaton's definitely really good in it, too. Um but seeing him in the news in his suit and just saying, Yeah, I'm Batman. I mean, that was that was pretty cool. That was really cool. Now, I probably wouldn't have this uh, someone who was older than me that grew up with that Batman would have definitely have a better, more nostalgic reaction. But, you know, for, for having respect for Michael Keaton Keaton's Batman, I was like, Yeah, that's pretty cool. That, that's that's actually really cool. Um But, you know, he's this whole trailer He's meeting up with like an alternate version of himself in a different universe. Apparently in this universe, his mom is still alive and he doesn't want to go back, but he has to kind of, sh looks like he's got to have to like share that mom with his altered, uh, alternate universe self. And I'm pretty sure in that version as in that universe, he's also the flash. They're going to be like teaming up to like try to, you know, fix the timelines or fix the universes or some shit. It looks huge. It's monu It looks monumental. It looks like it's gonna change everything, like James Gunn said. Which, if you don't know, he says that it's gonna wipe the universe and make an entirely new universe, which is very interesting. So it's like, is Ezra Miller's Flash still gonna be in James Gunn's universe? What's gonna happen with that? 
There's an introduction of other characters as well in this trailer, uh, like Supergirl, which is an, is crazy too. Um, characters, like I said, Ben Affleck's Batman are back. Also, um, Zod from Man of Steel's back. Michael Shannon Zod is back, which is crazy. I mean, like, I understand why they're not canceling this movie after seeing who's in it and what it looks like. It looks like a lot of money was spent to make this movie work and make it to actually fix, reset, whatever to the existing universe. Um... I don't know who else is going to be in it. I'm not sure what else is going to happen in it. But what I can tell, what I can see, is we're going to get a whole lot of Flash, a whole lot of Batmans, and a whole lot of Supergirl, it looks like. You know, it looks like a lot of Supergirl as well. And the movie's coming out in a couple months, or a few months. So, I mean, we're going to have a lot of answers, you know, a lot of questions that are going to hopefully going to be answered in this Flash movie, but like I said, man, it feels, it looks just like, very similar to No Way Home, but with the Flash, now, I don't know if, like, um, it's gonna have, like, as big of a cultural impact as No Way Home did with the Spider-Man, it probably could, I mean, you never know, like I said, people loved Michael Keaton as Batman, they loved him, they, 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 they adore him, and they, some people still think he's the best, so that can be a huge, like a huge, like a uh, uh, pooling of people who who saw that movie back in the day are like, oh, dude, that's my Batman. I gotta see this. This is gonna be dope. This is gonna be lit. I'm telling you what, man. Like this movie looks like it's made for theaters as well. Like there's a lot of movies that come out nowadays. You know, some some movies, I guess you could say, are not meant for theaters. There's a lot that are, but there's also that a lot that are like, eh, I could probably skip it. Nah, bruh. This movie looked huge, it looked gigantic, it looked like it was going to be, like, monumentally, like I said, changing shit, it's going to look absolutely stunning, it looks like they're going to go for that whole Flashpoint thing, which is like a a storyline in the comics where he changes every universe, or fucks up every universe, or whatever, um, but it looks sick, bro, it looks sick, it looks awesome, like I said, you know, it's going to be No Way Home's, No Way Home for DC, you know, this is going to be the one that is going to reset and put forefront James Gunn's DC Universe. Um, whether it's good or not, it's going to happen. And, you know, from what I can tell from this trailer, it looks like it's going to be wild and fun. But I will say this. I will say this. I know what's a trailer. Right? It's not the, like, the actual movie's not out yet. And it's still got time to go before it comes out. But I have to tell you this. Some of the CGI in this this trailer, there are some scenes where you look a little too hard, a little too close, and it looks kind of shit. looks kind of like shit. I'll be honest. There are some scenes where people get punched or people get thrown or someone's like a close-up of someone going fast and like running real fast. And it doesn't look like that good. I'm just being honest. I'm just being truthful. I what I've seen is what I see, and I can kind of spot bad CGI. I mean, I've had over two decades of watching these type of movies in theaters and the in like you know big movie spectacles, big gigantic blockbuster movies. I've seen all the CGI out there. I got to tell you this. I know it's a trailer, but I don't know if there's going to be enough time for them to go back and and touch up these what we've seen in this trailer. Maybe the, maybe it's a the, this trailer is like an early like you know CGI you know touch ups are are still happening to the actual film at this as we speak. But I don't know. I don't think that that's the case. I think that what we're going to get the way it looks is going to be is, is is what we've already seen in that trailer. So I'm just I'm letting you know this. I'm letting you know. As cool as the movie looks, as cool as it does look, and it does look really, really cool. It really does look awesome. I'm not entirely sure that it's gonna, the CGI is gonna be up there, you know, all the time. All the time. You know, some movies in the MCU have really, really, really good CGI for the most part. But then there's some scenes where the CGI clearly dips in quality. Whether that's because they had you know, budget cuts, they had to, you know, you know, really rush the product down at this point, maybe they couldn't spend a a lot of time on certain areas of the CGI, that's probably going to be the case for the Flash as well, 
But, you know, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will all look good. Or maybe it's going to look the way it looks in this trailer. I don't know. We'll have to see, I guess. But just to keep an eye on it, because, you know, you know the, this trailer, I think, did a very good job of setting up what they're going to set up and uh, putting, you know, making, making people know that, hey, Michael Keaton's back as Batman, like we all wanted. And it looks good. He does look very good, but I'm just a little concerned. I'm a little concerned about that CGI. Little, just a little concerned. Something that I'm also a little concerned about. That's not part of the DCU. Another trailer that dropped along with the Super Bowl, and that was the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three trailer. And uh, I have to tell you this, man. That trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three was probably the best trailer I've seen for a new movie that's coming out this year probably the best trailer i've ever seen that's for a movie that's coming out this year in terms of like setting the tone of the movie showing the cool parts that's going to happen in the movie but also like like a like a like the the music the crescendos the shots the cuts the edits that that trailer was incredible it was an incredible trailer it hit all the good beats it it promoted the movie and it did a massive, massively, massively good job at promoting that movie of the cool vibe. This is going to be the end of the Guardians. This is going to be it. This is going to be the end. Of, someone's going to die. Stuff like that. You know, we're going to get sad. We're going to get emotional. This is going to be it. Are you ready for it to end? One last ride. I'm like, yes, let's go. I'm ready. But the last time a Marvel movie had a dope, dope, dope ass trailer. And the the movie ended up letting me down so hard. Actually, there was two two movies that let me down hard. One after the other. Thor: Love and Thunder let me down so hard. What a cool trailer with Sweet Child of Mine. And that movie sucked ass. That movie sucked so much ass that I never ever ever wanted to watch it ever again. I've seen it once on Disney Plus. Thank God I did not see that shit in theaters, but man, that movie sucked. And number two, that had a baller trailer, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. That movie is very, very mid. It's very mid. It's not as emotional. Well, it's emotional, but it's not as epic as you think it would be. It's not as... The story isn't as strong as it should be uh, for obvious reasons. And it's just it's just mid. Like, it's not terrible, like Thor, Love, and Thunder, but it's definitely not as good as it could be. Um, so that's, that's why I'm a little skeptical. But I think that with the stakes in this movie and it being the last ride of the Guardians and also having James Gunn behind it, you know, who, who who I think he had a little bit of a fumble when it came to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, but Guardians of the Galaxy 1 was amazing, and he's just off of the Suicide Squad, which was phenomenal, phenomenal. I have high hopes for this, and I think that it's going to deliver, and it's going to be emotional, and it's going to be entertaining and funny and cool, and the soundtrack's going to be off the chain, and... It's going to go out with a bang. I think it's going to be amazing. I really do. Just because of this trailer, I think it's going to be amazing, an amazing, amazing, amazing movie. But I can't, I can't just say that and be like, yeah, it's going to be sick. Knowing from when I saw the last two badass trailers, the movies weren't as good as I thought. One being shit, one being mid. I just got to, I got to be honest with you guys. Got to be, I just got to be a little skeptical on this. I can't just, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to, I want my expectations high and they are high. I, 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 they are very high at the moment, but I, I guess I got to learn how to be more, you know, to, 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 I guess lower my expectations, but that's also not the person I am. You know, I just, I, I'm not the person to be able to just lower my expectations because I always want to want everything to be good. I want everything to be great. I want everything to be the best that it can be. And I guess just like 
sometimes, you know, my, my brain won't allow it. And I'll just go into being like, it's going to be the best thing ever. And I get disappointed. I don't know. I just, something about that. I just can't help myself. I always want it to be the best it can be, even though it probably isn't going to be all that good, which I guess is my fault. But you know, what, what are you going to do? What can you do? I, I can't do nothing about it. Um, sticking with Marvel though, something came out today and it was uh, Kevin Feige, you know, in an interview saying that he's thinking about putting out less Marvel TV shows on Disney Plus. He thinks that, you know, they're, they're trying to hit a zeitgeist and get a feel of the zeitgeist and how, like, all these shows that they're putting out are missing the point of, like, the MCU. And it's just kind of getting cluttered. And the, 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 it seems like, and I kind of agree with him on this, like the, the whole goal of the phase, I think, just kind of gets lost in all these shows. There's like too many, they're too, I guess, like doing their own thing, that they don't seem like they're, you know, still kind of focusing on the main plot points of the MCU, of phase four or five and all that shit, leading up until phase six. And I agree with him on this. I think that there is... Far too many Marvel shows out there. There's way too many Marvel shows that that I even care about. Like, I've seen quite a few of them. I've seen quite a bit of them. There's, like, a few that I have not seen and I won't see just because I think it looks lame. Like, the characters just seem lame in them. I've told you I'm not a fan of Loki. I'm, I haven't seen Loki. Um, I haven't seen Miss Marvel. I think it looks lame as shit. I saw Moon Knight, regretted it. I saw Hawkeye, regretted it. I saw um, well, well, She-Hulk, regret, regret it immensely. Um, just all these TV shows that barely touch on the overarching story of the MCU. They, they're good for introducing new characters, for sure. But I think that they could be done in a better way and just not a, a, a drawn-out six-hour movie of what's what they brand a tv show i just feel like marvel tv shows are just like big six hour long movies that you know that 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 go at the same pace as a movie just a bunch of filler shit in every single episode and like one or two like main points in an episode to get you to stay hooked onto it and ultimately just not very good tv not very good TV, not very engaging TV, and not TV that is like, you know, like like that you would tune in every week or you would want to. I mean, I did just to see where it goes because it is the MCU, and I feel like that, that their shit is, is going to be rewarding at the end. Some of it isn't that rewarding, and I'll be honest. Like, some of it's just, like, very fla falls flat on its face. Like, I don't see, and there's, like, certain, like, characters that I look at within the, uh, the, 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 the Marvel TV shows, I'm like... How are they going to fit into the Avengers? How are they going to fit into the the, the big like you know the big storylines, the big movies? I don't think that they will. Like I can't see Moon Knight being like part of the Avengers or part of like the new Avengers or whatever they're going to assemble. I can't see She Hulk being in Avenger either. I can't see, um, you know, Kate Bishop being a part of the Avengers. I just don't see it. I can't. I get like Captain, like Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, you can see that because they've already been in the Avengers. But these new guys, they just feel like they're not going to be a part of anything because, like, it's just like the stories don't really mesh all that well. It doesn't seem like they're even in the same world at some points. So I guess yeah, they're kind of losing like you know the 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 the. Like, the, the spirit of the MCU, I guess. Like, they're losing the point of that. And that maybe that's why they're cutting the shows. That they're, they're kind of losing. It's kind of getting muddled of what it is, what they're really trying to tell here as a, you know, a cohesive storyline. Maybe it's a little too much. And I think it really is. And I think I'm glad that Kevin Feige is actually saying that it is too much. Even though, you know, it was almost like, you know, gold, right? That he was going to be able to map everything out perfectly with all these TV shows Maybe it's, maybe he's, you know, maybe maybe even him, even Kevin Feige himself is a little like, hold on, where is this going to go? Where is this going to end up? And maybe they greenlit a little too many, too much shit to put on Disney Plus. And it's like, oh, this is way too much. Like, what are we, what were we thinking? So if they're going to tone it back on the TV shows, I'm happy. Um, I really am because maybe when they do that, maybe they'll work on the quality of the TV shows and make them more, you know, good TV and not just big six-hour movies that really don't have anything to do with anything of the MCU. 
that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping he can be like more uh, cohesive and more like I guess better at storytelling in these you know new chapters of the MCU in the future, just so we can be clear of what's what, who's in this, who's a part of that. We're gonna move on with this character. Maybe we'll maybe we won't see this character as much. Like I I honestly don't think that you will be you will see. You probably won't see a character like Moon Knight in an MCU thing for quite a while. Like he's definitely not going to be in any of the movies that come out. I just don't see it happening. I like his story, his whole character, like everything that he does. There is like no. It seems like there's going to be no effort made for him to join the MCU's, you know, big team in the future. I just don't see it happening. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just, I mean, like, from what I've seen and uh, that show, how it went about, I'm like, how how do you fit in, bro? How do you fit in with any of this? Maybe he doesn't. Maybe it's just that, you know, he he's just here for this, and then that's it, and then he's gone. Um, in that case, why even have a show about him, you know? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, why even cast Oscar Isaac, a A-list actor who played the role amazingly, but the show was just like, eh, what are we doing here? What am I watching? You're incredible, but like, what 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 are we gearing up for? Um, but anyway, I I think that the the less shows, the better. That means you can build quality on upon each show, and make them better. You know, I think if I think that this Marvel writing team was just stretched a little too thin, in this phase of shows. Just like there's so many damn shows out there that <laughs> that uh, frankly they don't really matter to the films. I'll be honest. Um. So maybe rework that, the whole strategy, make it so that, you know, stuff doesn't seem as, it's just noise at the end of the day. Like, you know, you want everything to matter in your universe, right? You want everything to connect. You They've always been really good about that with their films connecting and being intertwined and everything kind of connecting. And, and at least like the first three phases, they were very, very good at that. Now it just seems very discon- disconjoined and just like kind of messy. Doesn't really have like a a vision that they're f- that they're going to. At least not at this moment. Maybe after Ant Man we'll be able to see that. But at this point, at this point in time, right now, it just feels like it's a little too muddled and a little too just like not really driven by specific arcs and moments and characters. A little lost at the moment. And maybe less shows won't fix it. Maybe it'll make it even more confusing. I don't know. You know, you never really know. But at, at the same time, I think that all these shows does make it a little bit overwhelming for the general public and the general audience like who like Marvel movies and like the Marvel story. But it's like, I got to watch She-Hulk. I got to watch Miss Marvel. I got to watch this and that. And they're not even that good. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. Like, I, I can't tell you how how stupid of a TV show was Hawkeye. That show was so silly, stupid, and just, like, doesn't really, like, make, like, it. that's a show where you're, like, you watch and it's like, okay, Marvel's just making shit to make shit. There's making content so you would watch it and, you know, that's it. Subscribe and that's it. That, that's what it feels like when a show like Hawkeye comes out. It's like there's not that much story to it. I, I already understand Hawkeye's, you know, what he's been through. I, I get that. It's kind of just a fleshed out version of what he's been dealing with, you know, his family and all that. And get a little bit more modern. I know you're trying to, you know, bridge the gap, maybe phase out Hawkeye, bring in Kate Bishop. I understand that. You need to give him like a, you know, a new person to train to replace him. I understand you want to get younger, whatever, yada, yada, yada. But don't force that in and just like have a bad story. Like, like you could have that, that, that could be a cool thing to do, you know, usher in the new generation, but have a story behind it that actually is impactful, meaningful, and won't be like a waste of time. That's just my opinion. Sometimes I feel like these MCU shows are kind of a waste of time. I'll be honest. And they're not really done all that well either. So I guess, you know, if I were to give some advice to Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios and the showrunners at Marvel... 
if you still want to do these phases where everything is going to build up to something and everything's going to connect to something and everything's going to be, you know, a big event at the end of the at the end of the phase or whatever, that's fine. But make sure that everything that you put out, every single thing that you put out has is one driven by a good story and two that 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 same flame that's going to be at the end of the phases end up, you know, to be the big grand finale is present in everything and 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 makes it so everything that the audience watches is worth their time especially if you're going to be doing TV shows where you need people to tune in week to week to be to watch it just let's just be honest you know people TV as you know as popular as it is as popular as TV is and everyone loves TV if you don't make good enough episodes you're going to have a lot of viewers drop off and not know what's going on in your universe. So I think, you know, if you can master the TV, you know, our form of TV storytelling, you got a good story, people are not going to fall off your shows. People are not going to, you know, uh, not not be, you know, feel like they, that they wasted their time. Just, just, just a thought, you know, you know, I don't think, and I'm saying this because I don't think that you've mastered the TV telling, uh, format yet, but you have time to, you know, if you're going to cut down the shows and go for quality, which I think you should, uh, you know, if that's, what's going to, if that's, what's going to take, then do it. I'm all for, I'm all for change. You know, we don't need 12, nine, 10 or 10 or 12 shows every year just to have shows. You don't need it, you know. It's it's not it's not that's not the formula. That's not the way we want to see it, you know. It's, it's just not. Um moving on though. Moving on. I got to I I I got to ask you guys. What is going on with this world right now? What is going on? Like as I record this, I was talking about last week how the United States, you know, shot down a Chinese spy balloon over the coast, over like the the coast of, I believe, South Carolina, North Carolina, one of the Carolinas, over, over the coast of that, and that it was seen in Montana, right? This balloon was seen first in the U.S., I believe, in the state of Montana, in, right? Like, in last episode, I said it was shot down in Montana. It was not. Obviously, I correct myself. I'm not a journalist, but it was shot down in the Carolina coast, one of the Carolina coast. And first of all, I thought that that was so weird, right? Well, how does a balloon from China show up in Montana, flown in from Canada, make all of its way across like the Midwest and all the way to the South and the East Coast, and finally get shot down in fucking... Uh, uh, the the Carolinas. How does that happen, right? And then remember, I told you guys that that is just the beginning, sort of. Like now, the general public, now me and you, know what a spy balloon looks like. We have it now in our brain. We have footage of it. We have footage of it in midair, and then being shot down by a missile. We know what it looks like now. We we absolutely know. What these, at least, what that balloon looked like. We have a reference. We we see it with our own eyes. On the news, on Twitter, photos, videos, whatever. Right? We've seen it. We know what it looks like. And then, like a couple days later, the fucking government says that there's other stuff happening around, like, you know, Canada, uh, around Lake Huron. Uh, and around, what, what else was, I can't remember, there's a third one, I can't remember where it was at though, but there was like three more things that were shot down out of the sky, and these ones weren't really all that, you know, identifiable, right, they weren't as identifiable as this Chinese balloon was, right, at least to, you know, the, the pilots that were, you know, that engaged them, and by the way, they were all shot down, you know, thank God. Oh, Alaska. That was where the, third, the other one was. It was Alaska. Um, and, you know, I was thinking to myself, like, okay, hold on. We we just, like, 
talked about the balloon that was shot down. We got confirmation that that in the sky right there that was shot down over the Carolina coast was in fact a balloon. A balloon. These other things, though, we don't know what they are really. You know, one I heard that was like in a like a cyl- cylindrical shaped. That was like maybe the size of a Honda or Hyundai, like a like a small little car. The other one I heard was like in the shape of an octagon, which I'm like, huh? huh? Well, I've never heard of that type of shape on anything before, but interesting. And we shoot these things down, and you know, one was shot down over like the co- the northern coast of Alaska, I believe. And of course, over that is going to be like super cold and glaciers and, and ice and all that, and they've been having some trouble retrieving that thing, which I think is a load of horseshit, by the way. If you know that there's something fishy that's that's in the area, and you're going to shoot it down, you're not just going to take a week off and not go retrieve that bullshit, right? No, you're going to go get that as soon as it falls to the ground. You're going to have people there on the ground as soon as it falls on the ground to go retrieve whatever the fuck that shit is, you know? If you don't know what it is. And, by the way, I've seen the videos of, like, the White House press, you know, press hearings and and, and press meetings uh, of uh, that people, you know, these these high-up government people saying, like, yeah, this isn't UFOs, uh, this isn't aliens, we have no contact of aliens, we don't think that you should believe that this is aliens, you know, saying it all, like, cute and shit, like it's an SNL bit and trying to make fun of you, and we have the fucking reporters um, in the audience, laughing and chuckling that, oh, what could it be? <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to call bullshit on that because, one, why are you joking about this? This is something that I think that should be taken extremely seriously, immensely seriously. I mean, there's something that we don't know that is that is being, is hovering around in our airspace, and we have had to scramble jets like four or five times to shoot these things down, you know, in order to keep our airspace safe, right, and, you know, these things that were shot down by these pilots, you know, the not the air balloon, not the spy balloon by the Chinese, but these other things, they have not been identified as quick as this Chinese balloon was able to be identified, so, one, if it's not a Chinese air balloon, what the fuck is it, I don't think it's very smart for these officials and these higher-ups and these elites to simply just say it's not alien that quickly. When, one, you don't even have the... You don't even have the craft of what it is. You don't have... We have not retrieved it yet, according to you. How the fuck can you just say that that it's not aliens? You don't know that. You can't rule that out, you know? I understand that, you know, you 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 had this agenda, you know, that, that, that aliens is still very conspiratorial. It's very, you know, on edge. It's very edgy to think that this thing could be, in fact, alien. Which, you know, if it is... Okay, let's just say that this is aliens, right? These things are aliens. In my eyes, I am much more, I guess... I'm much much more at ease that it is aliens because our jets were able to shoot them down. You know? Thank God. Thank Christ that we were able to shoot these things down because if our jets like were unable to you know engage these guys they were unable to uh take them down which they have you know uh that would scare me but because at that point you know that whatever it is whatever that 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 object whatever that technology is was able to evade our missile systems and our instruments and our sensors. It's like, whoa, that's not good. That's actually very concerning. Again, it all comes down to that this was not able to be identified as quick as that balloon was. And, I, and I'll admit that that balloon apparently was really, really big. It was a super big balloon. But still, if we have jets in the air, pilots in the air, you know, fly, flying pretty close to this thing, they were able to to identify it as big as a Hyundai. I think you're able to make some judgment there that this is not a balloon, if you're able to determine the size of it being as big as a Hyundai or a small car, not a sponsor, by the way. But I think that you have the, you know, at least a little bit more than, you know, no evidence and nothing to back your, you know, your claim of it being something other than, you know, 
a, a balloon, you know. I just think that there's a lot of people out there, a lot of people that aren't taking this as serious as, as they should, and I don't really know why. I don't know why, and it scares me. It spooks me. In fact, the fact that there was um, an F-16 that engaged, I think the one over, I believe it was the one over Lake Huron that actually missed its first missile attempt on this object is kind of weird. Now, either he th- he just miscalculated which missile to use. I think he used like a, a Sidewinder missile was like just like supposed to be like a, uh, I guess a short range missile that was supposed to nab it, but it didn't. And then he armed another missile and then actually got it. I'm not too sure, but you know, it just seems kind of odd that, that, that for one, that detail wasn't, that detail wasn't present at the, at the, at the first reported of the incident. You know, that's, that's kind of weird. Why, why is, why is there so many details being left out of these, these stories? It doesn't really make any sense. And if it is a balloon, just say it's a balloon. Like I'm pretty sure if it is a balloon, they would have said it day one day one that this is a balloon but the fact that they took a little too long to say that it wasn't a balloon kind of uh is weird is weird like i'm pretty sure i've seen articles that that say that it is a balloon but the fact is you're repeating yourself your your history repeats itself if you go back in time and you read what happened roswell mexico in 1947 there are articles that are published headlines that are published that you can see that it says that the u.s planes shot down a flying saucer typed object it says that and then the next day that headline is swiped away and it's changed to a weather balloon something is happening out there that i'm not too sure that the government wants us to know what's happening but the fact that these happened three times after the air balloon incident this is weird this is very strange. A lot of people think that this is a cover-up, that this is a thing to distract you or something like that. I'm not so sure that's true. I'm not so sure that's true. But then again, what is true? How do I discover the truth? What is happening? You know, why do I have to find, you know, go through so many tweets and comments and links to find some kind of evidence when you got people in the White House are just like shrugging off all these things that could be serious. You know, I don't know. What well, you know, maybe maybe take your job a little bit more seriously. Maybe address the public with a little bit more of a serious tone. You know, if something's up, just say it. I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm going a little bit too crazy. Maybe too much stuff is happening in this world that that's it's too much to handle. Too much information out there. Um, did you guys hear about that, uh, that train that was derailed in Palestine, East Palestine, Ohio, that fucking like exploded and all these chemicals released into the air that are like super harmful to everyone there. Like people have had to move out. I've heard that people's, um, livestock have actually died from, from the exposure to all those chemicals that are close by. Like that is not cool. That's almost like a Chernobyl level disaster that's happening i know it's not i don't think it's nuclear but it's definitely a bunch of chemicals that you should not be breathing in which for one how does that even how does a train derail like that like how i don't understand what caused the derail like how did this just happen and you just let the 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 train explode uh it just seems kind of fishy like all the details you look up all these details you're gonna get one detail you're gonna get another detail it's just weird it's fishy doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Seems like someone made a boo-boo and someone's paying another person to cover up that boo-boo to make it seem like it's not their boo-boo. I don't know. Someone made a boo-boo and someone's going to pay, not going to pay, but they're going to get found out. Someone's going to, someone's going to, the truth always kind of comes out in these things, you know, whether it's years, months, years, whatever, decades, we will find out what happened about this train this train derailment that has pretty much made this area of the country, area of Ohio, so toxic, literally toxic, that 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 I've heard that it's killed some of the livestock there. Like, what the fuck? That place has got to be evacuated. I'm pretty sure it is at the moment. Um, but, you know, it's, it's weird. It's weird how these stories just all kind of happened 
so close to each other. I th- I'm pretty sure that that third and final like UFO shot down UFO was on the day of the Super Bowl, which was like, uh, huh? Like, do you know what day it is? This is football day. This is not end of the world type shit day. All right, keep your fucking pants on. We're not there yet, but nonetheless, a lot of freaky shit going on out there. A lot of shit that that I don't have answers to, unfortunately. I haven't really done the research. Every time I click a link to some article that might give me fucking some information, I always get like, you got to pay this much to read it. It's like, motherfucker, this is so important. This is something that I need to know, and you're making me pay for it? Ugh. Get a life. Get a job. My God. A lot of stuff to think about. A lot of stuff to think about. Are these UFOs? Are these balloons? Why did it take so long to identify these things? Why? I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. Why? 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 What's out there? I, 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 what is out there? That's the question, man. I don't know. It seems like the people, the officials, the, the people in charge, they seem to know. Like I said before on this podcast, I'm able to tell when people are lying. Uh, you can tell a bullshitter from a bullshitter. You can tell when someone's bullshitting. Seems like someone's lying here, and I don't like it. But I'll tell you what I do like. I'd like for you to like this video, share it, uh, subscribe, do all that good stuff. You can find this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube at Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva. This podcast drops every Thursday morning. Tell your friends, tell your family. If you have any questions, you can DM me. In my social media, it's all linked in the description of every podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching, everybody. And I will see you guys next week.